Oh my goodness, thank you everybody. I can't hear you. Yes. I flew in for, uh, from LA during the storm for you guys, two inches. Shh. Welcome everybody, let's hear it. Come on, put your hands together. This is exciting, I'm excited about this. You know, shh, most comedians dream of hosting the Oscars, but it was always my dream to MC the World Values Network. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Dreams really do come true. I won't host the Oscars, I will tell you that right now. I, I, my people have had enough problems with golden statues. <laughs> Folks, shh, you could hear these terrible jokes better if you're listening. Shh, I, uh, I never have hosted the Oscars, but I am very proud to say, and in this crowd, that I did host the Chabad Telethon. Thank you. It's the only telethon with barely enough material to last one hour, yet miraculously lasts eight. The only telethon that broadcasts in color, but when you're watching, you'd swear it's black and white. It's almost like nobody's listening. All right, we have a few people. No, because this is, shh. It was such an honor when they asked me to host this. And I was thinking of all the comedians they could have had. I heard it was down to me and Louis C.K. Um, I was third choice, actually. It was Louis Cosby and then me. Cosby would have done this, by the way. He, he's looking for work, if you want to hire him. I think Cosby would do like an ISIS retreat. I'd love to be on the phone listening to that call, right? Hello, Bill, we're big fans of yours. Not your comedy, the other stuff. <laughs> These people are missing good jokes. Am I right, people? They're missing good, thank you. The people who are listening, I've prepared for this crap. <laughs> Jews in the house. Yeah. yeah, representing, that's right. You gotta represent, like, although we don't really represent like this. It's more like we represent many clients. It's a different kind of, but you gotta be proud, Jews, am I right? Are we proud Jews here? Yes. Here's how proud, shh. Here's how proud I am to be Jewish. I will walk into a Starbucks, and you know when you give your order, sometimes they ask for your name. I give them my Hebrew name. I will walk in there and be like, hi, I'll have a decaf latte. Sure, could I get your name? Yeah, Elazar Yaakov Ben Shlomo. <laughs> They're always like, um, do you have a nickname or something? You guys should try it. Any Hebrew name you've ever heard, when you walk in, they ask for your name, just go Achashverosh. <laughs> try writing that on the cup. But you know, whenever I perform for non-Jewish audiences, I always like to put out a positive message, and I explain to them that Judaism is the only religion that doesn't try to recruit new members. Probably because we know we can't get any. I mean, what's the selling point there exactly, right? What's the commercial for Judaism? Tired of that excess flap of skin on your schmeckle? <laughs> Want to stop eating three of the most delicious foods on the planet? Bacon, cheeseburgers, and bacon double cheeseburgers? <laughs> or perhaps you're ready to give up eating altogether and enjoy partaking in one of our numerous fast days. Well then, Judaism's just for you. Do you crave persecution? scapegoating, enslavement, and or genocide, want to be hated for controlling the banks and the media, yet you're in between sitcoms right now, so you got to fly to LA, perform at the plaza for an audience that's not listening. But the point is, I'm happy to be here. It's a star-studded night, everybody. It's a star-studded night we have here. Yes. I am not allowed to make uh, any jokes about any of the stars, except I do want to say, shh. The biggest celebrity in this room right now, oh wait, I'm sorry, in his mind, Rabbi Shmuley Bateach is here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The only rabbi who got his smicha from Oprah. <laughs> Who's excited about Oprah in 2020, huh? Nobody? I wouldn't mind Oprah as president. Could you imagine the State of the Union address? I have a surprise for y'all. I bought Canada. 
Look under your seats, free vacation homes for everyone. I want that in my president. Shh. Rabbi Shmuley, I admire you. Rabbi Shmuley is currently on tour. He's doing a campaign against pornography with Pamela Anderson. I guess Stormy Daniels wasn't available. Uh, she's busy at this point. Next up for Rabbi Shmuley, he's doing a campaign against anti-Semitism with Mel Gibson. Um, <laughs> I wrote these just for you, Rabbi. I wrote jokes just for you. I am, um, shh, in all seriousness, can I say this about you, Rabbi Shmuley? I have admired you for over 20 years. You are like one of the only few people who put themselves out there, put their lives on the line in pro-Israel advocacy, and I'm very impressed with what you do. That's why I'm here, even though nobody's listening. Very few people do what Rabbi Shmuel, it's literally him, it's like, you know, members of the IDF, it's uh, Alan Dershowitz, Roz Rothstein from Stand With Us. There are very few people that literally dedicate their lives to Israel, to fighting anti-Semitism. There are too many anti-Semites out there, am I right, people? Yeah. I say anti-Semite. Some people say anti-Semite, but that sounds weird. That sounds like, you remember your Uncle Saul and your anti-Semite? <laughs> remember her, she hates me. What do you mean? I would like to put together a campaign, because there's, see, I call myself a pro-Semite, okay? And I think we need to tell the world that, look, we've contributed a lot of stuff. Science, medicine, technology, doctors healing people, scientists curing diseases, the innovation coming out of Israel alone. And I'd love to do a campaign called a pro-Semitism campaign, right? It would just be quick 30-second spots, real commercials featuring real people who have been helped by us, you know? Like a, a farmer standing in the middle of a field in the deep south just looking into the camera like, hi, I was told I had six months left to live. Then some Jew doctor took my cancer away, but left me with a case of pro-Semitism. I want to see these commercials on TV. I want to see like a hitman in Chicago, you know, standing in a prison cell, looking into the camera. I used to be a hitman for the mob back in Chicago. I took out a dozen guys, all bad guys, till one of my own guys ratted me out. The judge, he gave me 40 years to life, but my heeb lawyer, jewed him down to five. Am I a pro-Semite? You're goddamn right I am. I want to see this. I want to see this. We have to fight anti-Semitism, people, right? Yes. Well, the good news is, I, I think it seems like we have a good friend of Israel in the White House, does it not? Jerusalem, folks, am I right? Jerusalem. I got to be honest, though. The only thing I'll say about uh, President Trump is that he makes me nervous. He's a little bit volatile, a little bit unpredictable. I'd be nervous if Trump was president of my shul. <laughs> we are going to make the shul great again. The kiddishes have been a disaster, a disaster. There is no hot chillant. Where are the hot kugels? We are going to build a mechitza wall, let the women pay for it. We're going to secure our shul borders. No more Syrians, no more Persians, no Sephards, no Sephardic people. I love the Sephardic people. Where are the Sephardic people here? Where are the Sephardic? How are you? I love my Sephardic men are so, they're like the more macho version of us Ashkenazi men, right? They're hairier than us. They're stronger. Think about the way they greet each other on Shabbat, right? Sephardic men, they're like, Shabbat Shalom. They give you a big hug, and they yell at you, Shabbat Shalom! Ashkenazi men, good Shabbos! Good Shabbos! Shabbat Shalom! Let me just say that uh, my younger brother is uh, very, very big. He's, he's actually a gay pop star, and he is a champion of the LGBTQRSTUV. I don't know where it ends, so I'm just going to say them all. He's a champion of those rights, and it is an honor for me to stand here with the one and only Caitlyn Jenner, everybody. That is so exciting. How are you, Caitlyn? Again, I truly have admired you from afar, and you're even better looking from a close. Uh, 
I've admired you for a long time and your bravery and courage. You know, the Torah, I'm not going to give a, a little sermon here. That's for the rabbi. But the Torah teaches us to love and respect the convert. And if that's not a conversion, I, I don't know what is. Um, I thought I was brave to get a bris, but this is, this is real bravery, folks. I mean this. Sean Spicer is here, but we're out of time. Um, we have no time for those jokes. We'll leave that to Saturday Night Live. Um, is it you or is it Melissa? I can't tell at this point. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a fantastic evening?